Welcome back to the Ricky Matthews Show. I'll enjoy, always enjoy. I know you do too. In fact, I noticed that last week the conversation with Jeff Duncan on Facebook took off into the, you know, nearly a thousand views just uh, just on Facebook for for the conversation. Just yeah, you know, people are interested in the Saints, and for Jeff to be out at Newport Beach and following the practices with the Los Angeles. Chargers, and then obviously the game this weekend. We're super, super lucky to have access to him. That is for sure. Now let's shift gears. Talk about having access to somebody. Josh Morgan has become a good friend. Uh, my wife Ann and I uh, consider him one of our dearest friends now as he builds his house, continues to build his house in Bay St. Louis, and continues to sort of watch what is kind of semi-quiet. Hillary's cranking up in the Pacific. We'll talk about that in a second. we got a couple of interesting notes from the, the last several days in the model runs on the hurricane uh, models. So for some potential action in the Gulf of Mexico. So we're all going to stay tuned to all that. But, but without any further ado, let me welcome my friend, uh, Josh Morgan, back to the Ricky Matthews Show. How you doing, my friend? Ricky, good. It's awesome. Awesome to be back. Always love being on here. I'm a little jealous now hearing. I didn't realize that Jeff had such a regular spot. Now I'm feeling... I don't know, competitive or something, maybe. <laughs> hey, like I told you, man, if if we're talking a lot, that means you're chasing a lot. And and as long as you're chasing away from here, I'm cool. But, um, but you know, it's inevitable. It's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when we're going to get hit again. And uh, to have the opportunity to talk to you, I think your experience is – are important for a bunch of reasons. You collect a lot of scientific data when you do what you're doing. You help people see what the situation is like when you're in the eye of a storm. And for people who might think that's an exciting thing, um, I think you save lives. When people watch your tapes and watch your videos and watch your your, your new uh, reality show, which actually has a whole new series of fresh uh, series coming out, <clears throat> you um, I think you save lives because people look at those and they say, there is no way I'm staying at my house. So, you know, you, you're kind of a multifaceted guy, and I'm glad to be in touch with you. Thank you very much. You know, I appreciate that because I, I definitely feel like, you know, when I started out doing this, you know, when I was younger, it was just, a, you know, it's just kind of like adrenaline addiction. And, and, you know, it's good to be able to kind of found meaning beyond that or just making it useful to others. So that's a. Uh, I appreciate that. Hey, listen, we'll catch up on where you are in your house, and we'll think we'll talk about whether Hillary is something that you might, you know, go to the Baja Peninsula and chase. We'll get to that in a second. But, you know, you and I have been watching closely in the models. They they kind of all over the place. Anytime you get ten ten days out, it's hard to kind of lock in. It's pretty clear that there's going to be um, potentially a low center forming somewhere in the Gulf over the next few days. Um, probably what we're going to be dealing with here in coastal Mississippi is rain, but you never can know for sure. You just have to watch these things as they unfold and be ready just in case. Is that basically your message as well? A hundred percent. You know, and when you, uh, you know, you and I, you know, we like to text each other during the season whenever there's kind of, you know, interesting stuff in the models. And I think, I think, did you text me yesterday, but you nailed, you really, uh, you nailed it on the head when you said that the, the models are just kind of all over the place because that is absolutely my feeling about it. You know, you look at the models run to run and, you know, I know I do. I try to find some kind of a general trend in what's going on so I can kind of come up with a headline in my mind of where I think things are going. And I can't really come up with a headline in this last like few days. The models really are all over the place, run to run, model to model. It, it, it's just crazy. I mean, I guess the one takeaway that I'll say is, in general, there is a sense that that they're all sniffing what I call like fertility. You know, they're 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 all sensing that stuff in the Atlantic is about to pop. That we are going to get action. A lot of them do seem to suggest something in the Gulf is going to be forming. The National Hurricane Center has picked up on it. They have explicitly said they're now watching the Gulf, you know, a, a wide area kind of in the middle where they say, okay, there's going to be, as you said, something there next week. But, yeah, man, the, the details sure are vague. I don't, I don't know why it is, but they're just having, they're having trouble getting a handle on what's going on exactly. Looking at the euro, it does appear, because the euro has been relatively consistent, that there's going to be this big swath of, of rain that's going to come 
from east to west and right. and the northern gulf and probably go in somewhere around and, and on the on the coast of texas but hopefully all we can hope for here is rain let's hope that we get rain from that first system but what the thing that you're talking about which is the thing you get a lot of people on on facebook and and uh, and x formerly twitter that are out there hype and stuff every time a model run comes out that shows that it's you know one one ensemble member might show it's coming to you and so they they get they get people all concerned about it i don't post like that i i like to bring sort of a practical view toward what i'm seeing and what i'm hearing from a bunch of different people um but one thing is for sure that the the ocean heat content in the gulf of mexico is some of the highest ever recorded <laughs> and um so and right now you you if, if you just look at it now the 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 prospects on wind shear which at the higher level you want it you want it you, you don't want to see where there's very little wind shear because that does enable the thunderstorms to grow and that's how that's that's essentially how hurricanes get started but the reality is that the conditions in the gulf right now are pretty dangerous and so if that seed wherever that See, it can come from a Central American gyre, a CAG, or it could come from the Caribbean, wherever it comes from. And all it takes is a seed, and things can change rapidly. You saw what happened with Hillary over in the Pacific, how it went from zero to 60 in 24 hours. Oh, yeah. The Gulf of Mexico right now, I mean, I hate to be overly sort of graphic with my language, but it's a tank of gasoline. I mean, you look at the sea surface temperatures, you look at you look at the sea surface temperatures for the entire northern hemisphere and the Gulf of Mexico stands out. It's this like red pot of soup. It is just it is like warmer even than the Caribbean. I mean, it is just, you know, it's waiting to just anything to ignite it. And like you pointed out, the winter is pretty low right now. And actually, you know, we're in an El Nino. And one of the things about an El Nino is that it, it tends to cause winter across the Gulf and the Atlantic. So it tends to suppress hurricane activity, but but if if we get into this point, like you said, no shear, and then those SSTs, man, anything in the Gulf, we, I mean, it, it's it's dangerous. We got to look out for it. And now is the time. Climatologically, folks are like, oh, we've been having a slow hurricane season. No, not really, because a typical hurricane season really gets going usually around August 10th. So we're like August 17th today. So we're just about at the point where things are starting to get going. This is the time to really watch. And I say to Mississippians, especially August, because think of our big anniversaries. Today is the 54th anniversary of Camille's impact in Mississippi, August 17th, 1969. And of course, Katrina was the 29th of August. August, I think of as the month when Mississippi gets its really devastating impacts. This is a time for us to watch. Yeah, we're just to, just to, just so people know, we're taping this on Thursday morning, for, and it will run on Friday. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of people posting about that. I mean, I I was with my family over in Bellevue, and the water was getting close to our house, and the wind was blowing 150 miles an hour outside, and we had to abandon our house and go to the whites across the street. My friend Nancy White and and uh, that family Liddell and her and her, and her mother, her, her father Liddell White. And we uh, rode out the storm in a in a, literally a World War II fallout shelter, and had to leave the door open, of course, because the the pressure was so incredible. But yeah, everybody's telling their stories, and there's a lot of. In fact, you when we come back on the other side, you can talk about your neighbor uh, that you that you went over and and learned such a you know everybody's got a story like that who was here during Hurricane Katrina, that's for sure. But you know, again, it's the seed, and, and the thing is, you got a lot of dust, a lot of Saharan dust out in the Atlantic, uh, what they call the main development region now, and and storms may are are, are these seeds, these potential low pressure for, formations, can struggle until they get closer to home. And so that's the reality of where we are. These seeds, as they get into the Gulf of Mexico, if they get into the Gulf of Mexico, you can see a situation like with Katrina, where it was uh, just this weak you know, depression in the Bahamas starts to form as it gets to Miami, it crosses over in the Everglades, it actually strengthens. <laughs> and then it gets yep. out into the, it makes that dip to the Southwest and it just does a beeline, uh, and then it was, you know, that we we could see that again, unfortunately. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Katrina had those vibes. Like you said, it started to look better as it was crossing Florida. I felt that way about Hurricane Laura, too, the one that devastated Louisiana, that I, even over, like, as it was crossing over the greater Antilles, over, over land, it just seemed to have this determination to hold together. And you knew, man, as soon as that got into the open Gulf, look out. And uh, and we were right. You know, the Gulf is like a, the Gulf is like a magical place where you can kind of put anything in it and it can grow into a monster. On the other side of the earth, the Philippine Sea is like that too. You put anything into the Philippine Sea and it becomes a category five. I mean, not that that happens over here, but uh, there's certain parts of the world, certain bodies of water that just seem to conjure up the worst tropical cyclones. Well, you were in the eye of Hurricane Michael. You saw what that did. Um, whew, man, that you're talking about gaining strength in a, in a record amount of time. Listen, when we come back, we'll continue the conversation with the top hurricane chaser in the world, Josh Morgan, and uh, we'll get the latest on his house, and you know, we'll continue the conversation. We'll see you after this. Welcome back to the final segment of the Ricky Matthews Show. I have my friend Josh Morgan, the top hurricane chaser in the world. Uh, we'll get an update on his house here shortly, and we won't spend too much time talking about what's going on in the Pacific. But what's interesting about looking at some of the chitter buzz, Twitter buzz, X buzz that's out there already, you, and you posted about it, hurricane headed to Los Angeles. I mean, <laughs> come on now. <laughs> that, that's just not going to happen. Oh, yeah. No, no. There's, there's like folks are getting crazy about it. And the the, mis, the misunderstanding has to do with the, the sort of the sea surface temperatures. So folks from here would be shocked. OK, someone here, a listener from Mississippi, they go to L.A. and they go to the beach and there's like, OK, there's palm trees and it's hot out. And you're like, OK, you think it's going to be like the Gulf Coast. You jump in the water. You're going to you're going to die from from like like how cold it is, okay? It would shock you, even in the summer, okay? It's not like here, the water is very cold there. Even for me, you know, I'm, I'm from up north, I grew up in New York. Even New York has much warmer water during the summer than LA. So that cold water is like this protective barrier and it is almost impossible to get a hurricane up there. It actually, there's one known instance 1858, a Category 1 hurricane actually hit San Diego. So there's a, there's a record of it happening, but it is so rare because of those extremely cold waters. But for some reason on social media, I guess folks are just like, okay, the, the water is like a couple of degrees above normal, but I mean, a couple of degrees above normal is still way too cold, but the hype machine has started. Hey, for you, it's a hard one. To, it's a hard one to decide in terms of whether you're going to chase it or not, because I see some of the ensemble members keep it off the coast of uh, the Baja. Some of them actually take it in slightly. So you're going to be watching that one closely, I guess, huh? It is a very tough choice. I'm actually kind of like wringing my hands a little bit looking at the models because, as you said, it, it it's a close call. This is one of those hurricanes where it's going to be moving parallel to the Baja California Peninsula, which is part of Mexico. It's going to be moving parallel to the peninsula. And when you have a hurricane that's moving parallel to a coastline, those are the hardest chases in terms of figuring out, okay, is it going to hit the coast? And if so, where? Because just a one degree difference can mean hundreds of miles down the coast. And uh, deciding whether to pull the trigger on this one looks like it's going to be a, t a tough call. I keep looking at the, her the models to see, do they trend closer to the coast so that makes the decision easy or further away from the coast so that makes the decision easy? But right now, they're kind of right in the middle and it's... Uh, it's causing me a lot of angst. This is the nature of this sport. You know, I have to just be at peace with it. There's always uncertainty. There's always like horrible indecision about whether to go for things or not. Hey, do you do you see your folks at, at Weather Nation wanting you to maybe go to the Southern California area just to get get engaged in some of the hype? Oh, you know, it's it's funny you you it's funny you ask that because uh, you know my my producer just texted me this morning wanting to kind of discuss it discuss Hillary and I'm, I'm scared that's going to come up like <laughs> well, yeah no I'm like I'm kind of dreading this because generally we're very aligned and and what I love about Weather Nation is they 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 want me to be me and meaning going going after stuff that I'm interested in but I do know in terms of TV a a, a, a falling apart messy piece of junk tropical storm in LA is a lot more interesting to them than a hurricane down in Mexico just because of you know what viewers find interesting American viewers find interesting well you so might have to give in to them just but hey what you actually are bringing though is 
Listen, the impacts from rain and all these things could be important to, to that area, but don't be concerned about the impact of a hurricane. That actually, the, the fact that you bring that experience, you might have to actually give in to them on this one if that's what they want you to do. But here's the other thing. When the, when the season finally does get going, which we're pretty sure it's going to get going, all the experts say it's going to be above average even still. You're going to be all over the place is what my, my guess is. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you. And I think it might be like last year where it feels like it's a slow start. But then once it starts going, then it's like kaboom. And it's just like a sausage factory of of like hurricanes forming one after the other. And we're just we're just going, going, going into, you know, into October. I think it's going to be like that. I think it's going to be like that, too. Hey, the house is coming along. You got a roof on now. Everything's buttoned up. Uh, it's got to be exciting for you. Yeah, yeah, it is. No, it's it's, just, it's very exciting, and uh, I'm happy to say the house is going to have a fortified gold certification. Our evaluator from Hotson Inspections; these are the guys. They've come three times to look at the house and make little recommendations for upgrades. I mean, my builder, Bo Ladner of Paramount Contracting, he's awesome. Uh, the inspectors, the evaluators were super impressed, but of course they wanted just a couple of extra things. But now we've done those things, and this house is. Yeah, this house is going to be certified gold, and I'm really happy about that uh, just for the peace of mind because, as I've said to uh, many folks, I don't plan to ever uh, evacuate from that house. I'm going to ride out anything in it. So, As you, as you know, we, we did gold standard as well, worked with an uh, engineer here in coastal Mississippi, and his name is Terry Moran, and we're going to build a, 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 a pool house. And we, you know, we're having to go through the process of getting it certified, you know, getting the plan certified. And then it's a, it's a long drawn out process, but it's important actually, because it really does help when it comes time to get insurance. Listen, uh, Josh, we're out of time. Good luck to you if you have to go to uh, Southern California and uh, we'll stay in touch. Uh, it'd be interesting to watch the Gulf together. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think uh, I think we're going to have stuff to talk about in the coming weeks, like you said. Like I said when I started the show, this has been a fun day to me. I love the Saints. I enjoy having my conversations with Jeff Duncan. I really enjoy catching up with Josh Morgan. Uh, have a great weekend, and we'll all watch the tropics together, and we'll see you on Monday morning. 